Hey, this is Kevin Phillips. In this video, I want to just go through the basic blending process that goes on when you're working with hypervoxels. In Lightwave 11, and this is the reason why I'm making this video, they added this option to blend scale. And I'll explain what that does as I go through. And you can see here I've got a couple of hypervoxels, and as they get close, they start to suck together to create this nice blobby mass. And then as they get further apart, they kind of pull apart like that. So it's very kind of liquidy, kind of like mercury or, or something like that. Okay, so if I turn on show particles, this is the OpenGL display you usually get when you use the show particles option. Um, you can see the hypervoxels here because I'm running VPR at the moment. Um, but basically what this represents is the hypervoxel, which is this uh, solid spherical shape in here, and an influence area, which is roughly twice as large. That's this dotted area around here. And if we watch this, as it gets closer and closer, as this influence area starts to cut into the hypervoxel area, that's where hypervoxel starts to pull them and influence them towards each other to blob them like so. Now as they get right to the center, where they're on top of each other, I've noticed purely out of observation it appears to get roughly about 10% larger. And now this is an important number for uh, reasons that we'll look at later on in terms of the blend scale and how it works. Okay, so that is how that works in terms of interaction. Now let's turn on this other set. Now these ones above are the same as these, except for the fact that instead of being one meter, like that, I've halved them because I wanted smaller hypervoxels. Let's turn on that. Now when you set the particle size here, of course, it says here's the particle size or the hypervoxel size and here's that influence area which is roughly twice as large and of course because it's smaller so is that influence area so they have to get a lot closer to create that kind of blend so if we scrub through that so the ones down here are fine because they've gone through and touched each other like that now these two at the top they have to get a lot closer okay so these are just as a kind of a um, explanation what's going on here the position of the center of these hypervoxels is identical to each other. Okay, it's just a scale. So as I drag this across, they're starting to cut into each other now. And of course, here they go. They basically do the same as that. And of course, on the way out, they, they unglop, I guess. Okay, so let's go to this third set of hypervoxels, these yellow ones. You notice that these look exactly the same size as these, because they are. Okay, if I turn on the show particles, you'll notice that these might look the same as these, but their influence area and their hypervoxel size is actually the default, the same as the center one, or one meter, as it says there. Now, the difference between that and that is this thing here, the blend scale. Now, I was talking about how things appear to expand by roughly about 10%, and that's not so much scientific or technical, it's more an observation that I've made. Um, this is where it's important, because blend scale, 60%, looks the same as 50% of that. So you've got to add on another 10% when you set this. So if you want them half the size, it's 60%, not 50%. Okay, so what happens now? Well, as these get close to each other, because we now have a larger influence area, okay, even though they look smaller, okay, here we go. As they get close, and as they start to cut into this area here, because the influence is still far apart, but they get into here, they start to blob together as well. Well, I should say blob together, not blob together, it's a kind of a strange term to use. But you see that it's calculating this influence based on as though this was a smaller hypervoxel area. So it's case to cut into here rather than here to start working. But of course you get the, basically you're getting the, the best of both of these. You're getting the larger kind of distance for influence and you get the smaller size hypervoxels. And what happens here is you get this very broad blend, which is kind of more like taffy. It's very elastic looking. And it comes in the center, and of course, everything kind of blends together. And you notice it's almost the same. It's a, well, it's a hundred percent basically. And then goes out the other side, and you get this really nice long 
kind of stretch again on there like so okay so that in a nutshell is basically 101 on the blending effect in hypervoxels